Hello, I'm Sonia, and welcome to Red Cardinal Kitchen. You know, every time I make a cake, I hear my mother telling me to keep my hands away from the beaters as she's whipped up those beautiful cakes with her mixer. These thoughts come to me whenever I use my mixer so I don't lose my fingers. So with that said, I will be using my mixer, and I will be extra careful keeping my fingers away from the beaters. So stick around, and we'll be right back to bake this delicious sugar-dusted cherry chocolate cake. All right, welcome back. Well, thank you for subscribing and clicking that bell. Now you will be the first to get my free recipes. And just a reminder, the recipe with ingredients and directions will be in the description below. Also, we have a merch store in the shopping section of our YouTube homepage. There are t-shirts, hoodies, aprons, coffee cups, and more coming soon. So come check us out. All right, so let's get started. Well, here I have a pan, and I need to get it oiled down here. So I'm just going to use my fingers. My hands are clean. And I'm going to get it going. And then over here, I'm going to rub a spoon <laughs> and put a little bit on there. Not too much, but just enough that I'm going to combine the flour and the shortening, the lard, to make a small little paste. And then I'm just going to chase it around. Now, I can feel the shortening. Sometimes it looks chalky, but it will... It will work. I may have to just a little bit more. Get it combined. And if you want to use a spray, that's fine. However, butter it. I find that though uh, shortening and butter doesn't quite do it for me. It's either lard uh, or a heavy, heavy spray. And I don't like heavy, heavy sprays. One, because I can't breathe. They go up into my lungs. But uh, I suppose I should stand back. I think when I finally quit buying those sprays is when they start going up in price. And I said, the heck with it. I'm just going to be old-fashioned. <laughs> okay. So this is what it looks like. And it doesn't absorb absorb into the food. Now I'm just going to take. Uh, will follow me over to the sink. It's messy, and I'm just going to sprinkle my pan. Get it quite dusted, and then just kind of turn it. And I'm going to catch my flour down in the sink. There we go. There it is. And then just wipe around the edges, make it clean looking. All right. So now I have flour in my hands. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to set this aside over here. And I'm going to put my oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And inside I have a steamy pan of water. So while that's heating, let's make the cake. Dry ingredients come first. Turn that over. Okay. I want to, whoops, wrong one. 
<laughs> I want to measure out, let's just get me my little whisk or scraper here. And I'm just going to, that's one half cup, and then we need a cup of flour. Now, if you want to make cake flour, after you measure it and get it completely measured very nicely, take out two tablespoons of flour and add two tablespoons of cornstarch. I'm out of cornstarch, so I can't do that for you. All right, now. I'm just going to kind of aerate it a little bit. You can also use a, a wire whisk and get some air in that flour, make it nice and light. Now I will measure my flour once again. And I need one cup and one half. You want to make a larger cup, increase your flour to two cups, increase your water to one quarter cup or milk. Okay, there's one cup and you can see how messy it gets with me. <laughs> I want to take and slice that off. So there's the one half cup, and I'm putting it into my pan that has, or that I'm going to be keeping my dry ingredients in, which is right here. Okay, so now I'm going to move my flour behind us, and we're going to finish putting our dry ingredients together and we have some baking soda now this is not the baking powder this is the baking soda because I'm going to be using an acid which is my apple cider vinegar so I'm gonna put things out of the way so I know that I put them in because you can see that the salt and the baking soda look similar. And I don't want to make that mistake. So put it aside. And this here is the wet ingredients. Wet, 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 wet. Just checking, checking. Okay. So this is all we have. Now, I have some flavored, and this is uh, cherry flavored uh, gelatin. And I'm just, and it contains the sugar in it. So I'm going to put this with the flour to get that all mixed in. It just seems easier for me, but you could do it either way. And now, so I don't <laughs> have chocolate all over me like I did in one of my little films. <laughs> See, oh here it is. I need one, I use a quarter cup kind of heaped like such. And it hasn't been sifted. But I want to do that because I don't, it's harder to get those little lumps out once you get that moisture in there. So that's what we're going to do. And when you get down to the, oops, got to be careful, it's so fine powder. Just kind of okay. And 
I'm just going to knock it out now. And I will stir my cocoa and my gelatin, flavored gelatin with sugar, my salt, and soda. It's all in my dry ingredients. Set it aside. All right. So now that's taken care of. And all right, I'm going to clean up my mess a little bit and we'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So I have my dry ingredients in this bowl and now we're going to work on our wet ingredients. So I'm going to put in some sugar, and this is, uh, we have the three quarters cup of the gelatin sugar in there, and I need one cup of sugar, so I'm just going to go ahead and put in one quarter cup of brown. I like brown, uh, dark brown with the molasses because it does have moisture. It gives more moisture to the cake. So in that goes, it's packed. We'll set it aside. To that, I want to have two tablespoons of vegetable oil, the kind you like. Put that in there, what you like. Okay. And then I want two tablespoons of soft butter. Just kind of eyeball it, won't hurt. And so we're going to end up with one quarter cup of butter and oil combined. So that's your fats. Oop, putting it. <laughs> goes over here. I guess it wouldn't hurt to have that little extra, but I was trying to be precise. All right. Almost had a mixture on the floor and got mixed up in my measuring. <laughs> All right, put that aside. But you see, we made it. All right, now also I have one egg. I have to crack it on a hard surface. And then just kind of pour it out of there. It comes out. <laughs> I don't want the shell in there. All right, so we have our fats and our sugars and our egg. And wipe my hand from the egg there. And I'm just going to mix it until it's pretty combined. And I'm not looking before to cream it, cream it, like, you know white and fluffy, just the bun. This is just a simple cake. Uh, great for something. And they say that you cannot uh, copy a cake because of the, what they they stabilize their flowers and everything so that has always comes out soft. But it might be light and hairy. I could get mine that way. It just it won't be like a box cake. Actually, I think we'll make it so much better. All right. I hope you could have heard me through all that music. All right. I'm just going to lay it on its side. Now, I'm going to put my dry ingredients in front of me and I'm going to make a well. So there's a little, kind of a little volcano here. <laughs> like that. See, better keep in the camera here so we can see this. There. So, in that well, I'm going to be putting 
one whole cup. Now this is almond milk, but use the type of milk that your family enjoys. And to that I am going to, now this will not uh, get thick because it's almond milk, but I am going to put in, and I won't put this whole thing in here, let's see. Uh, what did I do with it? Okay, so we need two tablespoons. So here's my cup. I know that four tablespoons is a quarter cup, so I'm just going to go half of that quarter cup. That'll be two tablespoons. My goodness, close. All right, and in it goes. And then we're working on our wet ingredients. I might as well go ahead and put in, let's see, I want about a quarter teaspoon. So let's see. One teaspoon is the cap. So I won't go half, I'll go below the half mark in my cap, and that will be a quarter. And there we are. And then I'll just put it on. <laughs> So everything has come out almond now. <laughs> All right. So we got that. And I want to make sure that this is away from heat. So I think I'm just going to put it right back in the cupboard because I have a hot oven and a hot candle wax over here. I don't want my the alcohol in my extracts to explode. <laughs> All right. So now we've done our... our business with a beater. Now you could have, I could have done it all with a beater, but for the sake of uh, my audience, maybe they'd like to use a mixer at home so they can see what we're doing. And you can by all means do the whole thing with the mixer, but I'm a little backwards. So, <laughs> so what I want to do is I want to put my, continue with that wet ingredients. And I'm going to put it down into that well with the with the milk and the vinegar and the flavors. And this is the oil and the sugar, part of the sugar, the brown sugar and the egg. All right. So now I'm just going to take and mix it in the middle. And then, can you see in my bowl? And we're just going to kind of tease it around the edges and just bring that flour in a little bit at a time until it's all in. And it's fairly easy. Now, it looks like a red velvet cake. This is a cherry cake. Now, it looks to me like it's a little stiff. So that means I need between two tablespoons and one quarter cup of extra liquid. But instead of reaching for extra milk and calories, <laughs> I'm just going to put in water. So we'll start adding a tablespoon. So one tablespoon and see what that does. So you don't want it real thick. That's one tablespoon, two tablespoons, and of course measure. I will put all the measures, of course. I'm just so used to doing it like this. But uh, okay, so it was just two tablespoons. I don't want to go anymore. That looks about right. Looks like a cake mix. Similar to a pancake mix. Oop, I'll be cleaning. <laughs> all right, and that's all there is to that. And so what I need to do is get it into that pan. Let's see. 
Got to unplug my mixer because I don't want to get my fingers in it. I've accidentally kept it on before and uh, lucky all those times you didn't get me. Try to keep it ugly for you. Now, let's get that in the pan. And I took my uh, tool away. And we'll just give it a turn around the edges. And we're just going to pour it right down the middle. And get one side of the pan. Wipe off my spatula, turn my pan, and get the other side, and stay in the pan. <laughs> and that helps to get it all out. Not so messy that way. And just give it a little toss. You can do it that way. You can also turn it until you see the center start to dipping down. So you want higher on the outside of the cake than on the inside. So you don't have such a mound on the top. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Yeah, I want a little one, but not, not so, you know, I don't have any kids this year anymore. I used to love the mound. The kids always said, Mom, you got a mound. Cut it off, they get a bite before it got iced into the oven for 25 minutes. In my oven, it's 25 minutes. You can check yours at 2025. 20, Use toothpick test or whatever you have to test it with, maybe your finger. <laughs> and uh, I wouldn't go over 33 minutes. And the cake should have, when it come before, when it's done, it should have a little bit of a wet circle in the middle, but not doughy. Just looking like it just needs three minutes more. Don't do the three minutes more. All right. Well, we'll be right back. And when the cake is cooled, I'm going to give it a nice chocolate dusting with some sugars. And we're going to have that taste test. So we'll see you in a little bit. All right, and we're back. The cake is out of the oven. It took about 23 minutes to cook, to bake. It's all dressed up, and so it's time for that taste test. So let me cut me a slice. Hate to ruin it. <laughs> It's cooled, but not cold. So you'll see I'm tugging a little bit because it's so moist and hot in there. Wow, I cut myself a pretty big size there. Serving. It's a little bit big. All right, let's. It's cherry. So let's just sit it right down. There we go. And that's what it looks like. Now if you want a taller cake, make it, make it double, double everything. Or you can uh, use, uh, this will fill um, an eight by eight square pan. If you want a long nine by 12, whatever they are, you need to double this recipe or double it and Make it a stack, or three times, or four times. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to put this over here. And I'm going to move this over here. Now keep it your way so you can see. Crack my knuckles. <laughs> All right, then I want to get some, I, I, I'm going to keep off the chocolate, because I just want to concentrate on the cake. So I'm going to go up underneath first. 
just want to taste the cake part. If it's possible. Mmm. Cherry. Chocolate and cherry notes. Mmm. Mm -hmm. Now I can go ahead. I didn't want to get that real sweet sweet on there. It changed the flavor of my cake if I did so. So now I can go for the sweet. Mm. And then you wash it down and take another bite. Well, thank you for subscribing and clicking that bell. So for every step of the way, Red Cardinal Kitchen says, happy eating and God bless. I'll see y'all next time. Thanks.